underground and partly surface level subway and rail system in the CBD of Melbourne, Victoria. The loop includes three underground stations, Flagstaff, Melbourne Central and Parliament, with two ground level stations at Flinders Street and Southern Cross. Melbourne's 15 radial suburban railway lines feed into the loop at its northwestern and southeastern corners. The loop follows La Trobe and Spring Streets along its northern and eastern edges of the CBD street grid. The elevated Flinders Street Viaduct forms a ring of four tracks around the central city. The Melbourne Underground Rail Loop Act was brought forward by Transport Minister Vernon Wilcox with the Melbourne Underground Rail Loop Authority created on New Year's Day of 1971 to oversee the construction and operation of the loop. Tunneling works under the city streets commenced in June of 1972 using a tunnel boring machine built by Richmond engineering firm Jacques Limited. The first completed tunnel was the Burnley Loop, with the final breaks were made on the 8th of June 1977 near the museum station site. The loop was opened gradually between 1981 and 1985. Museum Station and the Burnley and Caulfield Tunnels opened first on the 24th of January 1981. The City Circle Tunnel opened with special services on the 6th of December 1981 and Clifton Hill services started using the loop on the 31st of October 1982. The Northern Tunnel opened on the 7th of January 1985. In this video, we will be looking at all three underground stations as well as Flinders Street and Southern Cross stations. Five Star Station opened on the 27th of May 1985 and the station was the last station to open in the city loop. The station takes its name from the nearby Flagstaff Hill, a significant site in Melbourne's early history, and services Melbourne's legal district. It runs under La Trobe and William Streets, near the northwestern corner of the CBD. The station also serves the Flagstaff Gardens. The station was the sixth busiest station in Melbourne between 2017 and 2018, with 4.75 million annual passengers. Flagstaff Station commenced opening on weekends and public holidays from New Year's Day of 2016. It was previously the only station in Melbourne to be closed on weekends and public holidays due to its proximity to business-related buildings such as the Commonwealth Law Complex, banks and major office buildings. The station was constructed by mining methods and has four levels to a maximum depth of 32 metres below sea level. Initially, the city loop did not operate at all on Sundays. That was changed with the introduction of Sunday trading. But at the same time that the other two underground loop stations opened on Sundays, Flagstaff Station had its Saturday services cancelled. And also at Flagstaff Station, um, this is a secret entrance into Flagstaff Station. And it's a lift access by William Street, which is which is very interesting. But actually, the main entrance is located on the other side of the road. That way. And so that is pretty cool that a secret entrance is located here. And, um, but it's only used by the lift access. Um, but, most, but sometimes people use this entrance. But mostly they use the main entrance, which is on the other side. But less people use this entrance. This is the lesser used entrance and exit of Blackstaff Station. Melbourne Central Railway Station opened on the 24th of January 1981 and was the first station to open in the city loop. The station was first named Museum after the adjacent National Museum of Victoria and the Science Museum of Victoria in the State Library of Victoria Complex on the opposite side of Swanson Street. The station was renamed Melbourne Central on the 16th of February 1997 as the station had to reflect the name of the shopping mall near the station which was also called Melbourne Central. The station was the third busiest between 2017 and 2018 with 15.859 million annual passengers. The station was built using cut and cover construction. In December of 1973, to permit excavation of the station, La Trobe Street and its tram tracks were temporarily relocated to the south onto the site of what is now the Melbourne Central Shopping Centre and moved back on completion of the work in 1978. 
The adjoining Melbourne Central Shopping Centre opened in 1991, being built around the existing escalators to street level, with only minor integration between the station concourse and shopping centre. The station will connect to State Library Station, which is part of the Metro Tunnel Project, which will be completed by 2025. Parliament Station opened on the 22nd of January 1983, and the station serves as Melbourne's government district and is underneath the Parliament House of Victoria and the intersection of Burke and Spring Streets at the eastern end of the CBD, and is currently the world's southernmost underground railway station, but will be surpassed by Anzac Station when the Metro Tunnel opens in 2025 since Anzac Station is further south than Parliament. The station was the fourth busiest station in Melbourne between 2017 and 2018, with 10.19 million annual passengers. The station platforms were constructed using mining methods. Each platform is an individual tunnel and are linked to the other platform in the same level by a number of cross tunnels. This choice in design left the remaining pillar of rock between the tunnels too weak to support the required lights, so it was replaced with concrete. A pilot tunnel was made, enabling the walls to be constructed ahead of the main excavation. At the time of opening, the station had the longest escalators in the southern hemisphere. Flinders Street Station opened in 1854 and serves all lines of the metro system and is located on the corner of Flinders and Swanston Streets. The first railway station to occupy the Flinders Street site was called Melbourne Terminus and was a collection of weatherboard train sheds. It was opened on the 12th of September 1854 by Charles Houghton. The Terminus was the first city railway station in Australia and the opening day saw the first steam train trip in the country. By the 1880s, it was becoming clear that a new central passenger station was needed to replace the existing ad hoc station boards. A competition was held in 1883, but the winning design by William Salway, with a pair of grand Italianate buildings either side of a rebuilt Princess Bridge, was not built. In 1905, work began on the station building itself, starting at the west end and progressing towards the main dome. Work on the dome started in 1906. The structure required heavy foundations as it extended over the railway tracks. In May 1908, work was progressing more slowly than planned, with the expected completion date of April 1909 unlikely to be met. The Wayne Works branch of the Victorian Railways took over the project, and the station was essentially finished by mid-1909. The veranda along Flinders Street and the concourse roof and veranda along Swan Street were not completed until after the official opening in was put onto the facade of the station to celebrate 100 years of Victorian railways. <music> Southern Cross Station opened in 1859 at Spencer Street, renamed to Southern Cross in 2005. The two major city stations were not linked until 1879, when a single track ground level line was opened. It operated only at night, and only for freight trains. In the 1880s, it was proposed that Spencer Street Station was to be removed in order to facilitate the westward expansion of the city, but the plan was subsequently rejected. In October 1960, work on a new Spencer Street Station commenced sparked by the construction of the Interstate Standard Gauge Line to Sydney. A station building was constructed which largely replaced 
the 1880s iron sheds and a new 430 meter platform number one was built. The passenger subway, which had been constructed as part of the 1918 works, was extended to include access to the country platforms. In connection with construction of the underground loop, platforms 9 and 10 were rebuilt as part of the suburban section of the station. Construction on the new roof started in 2002. As a result of overruns and design issues, some elements of the original design, including an additional proposed footbridge connecting Lonsdale Street with Stockland Stadium, was scrapped. The roof was completed in 2006 in time for the 2006 Commonwealth Games. As part of the regional railing project, an extra two platforms were constructed and opened in December of 2013. These are divided into 15A, 15B, 16A and 16B. These are often used for Gippsland services and the lines that use the regional railing tracks to Sunshine, Geelong, Ballarat and Bendigo lines. These platforms allow trains to avoid the North Melbourne flyover, which is an inconvenience for trains as it has a maximum speed of 15 km an hour and has shown to cause abnormal wheel wear on the velocity fleet as confirmed by an independent report commissioned by V-Line in 2016 to find out the cause of the problem which ultimately led to up to a month of cancellation of services. I hope you enjoyed this City Loop video. Like, share and subscribe to my channel and I will see you all next time. Goodbye!